you know, sometimes I, when I'm doing the stuff that I do, the work that I do, um, I almost didn't do it because I was like, I don't know, like I should probably wait until my kids are like fully grown and, you know, make sure everything turns out like just right, it, you know, before I start trying to help people raise their own kids and have all my ducks in a row, make sure everything is, you know, just perfect. And I can report and say, you know, this, my kids turned out this way. And anyway, um, I decided that I didn't have to be that perfect and my kids don't have to be perfect. And, um, I'm sharing this because I feel such a sense of accomplishment and pride when I watch my daughter interact with this little boy um, who is going to be now the big brother to these twins that are coming today. And just to hear the language that is naturally coming out of her mouth, to hear the words, to hear her tone, to hear um, how she's open to receiving feedback. I just am like, oh, my heart is really, really full because man, that is not, it's how she was trained. Like that is her inner voice. Those are her tapes because of how I spoke to her and raised her and how I very, very consciously stepped away both physically and psychologically stepped away from how I was raised to do it differently and to put different tapes in her head. And so her mind wouldn't, and her heart wouldn't be filled with the tapes that I had and that I had to overcome in becoming a parent. And it's been so hard working um, to, to fix all of that or to heal all of that and to change all of it for me. And I just love that she is starting from a very different place. Just what's naturally coming out of her mouth is so empathetic and so lovely and um gosh uh, i'm really glad that i didn't wait to till she was 20 or 21 or 18 out of the house to start teaching you what i already know because i can see that it works i can see that this style of parenting works and it doesn't mean that your kids are going to be perfect my kids are not perfect my kids are pretty freaking challenging and i am not perfect i am full of flaws and yet we don't have to do it perfectly. Our kids don't need us to be perfect in order to have healthy bonds with us, in order to learn how to be calmer and more mindful and more empathic themselves in the world. It's not, they don't need us to be this perfect Zen creature or to sit, do everything exactly right. You know, there's a, a really big difference between, um, you know, wanting to do things right and taking action that actually leads toward wholeness with you and your family, as opposed to, you know, with so many of us were raised with parents who really did want what was best for us, but the actions they were taking weren't um, aligned with their vision for us. It's like, because they were doing the best they had with what the best they could with what they had at that time, the actions that they had didn't really match up and mesh cohesively with what they wanted for us. And so I'm just so glad that we have a new paradigm to work with, that we have new tools and new practices. And, you know, I just can really swear by the stuff that I'm teaching. I just, I know it works. It works with my own kids, it works with other people's kids. Like it's just such a better way and it just feels so much better. So I, I just wanted to share that with you because, um, you know, I have my doubts too, you know, I'm like, is this, is this thing on? Is the, you know, is this working? Is this parenting style working? Oh my gosh. Like I don't always get the behavior that I want from my kids, you know, and it's taken a lot of work for me to shift out of that mindset of, um, you know, that, in order for me to, good, to be a good parent, it means my kids have to behave a certain way. It's not always, and certainly not only about their behavior, it's about the process of going through how we're shaping their behavior. It's not always gonna result in kids stopping their behavior on a dime. If a kid is stopping their behavior on a dime, they're either super compliant by nature, and very few of you have those kids here, and or they, um, Certainly strong-willed kids are not like going to stop their behavior on a dime unless they are afraid, 
right? And so when you see other kids, other parents who say, hey, get over here, and their child actually does that thing, obeys right away, they've either got a really compliant child and or they've used some shame or scare tactics that will quote unquote work. They'll work to get that behavior on a dime, which I know seems very appealing in that moment when your kid isn't the one who's snapping to attention and following what you're saying, right? Um, but it doesn't work in the long term. It does not work to establish their sense of agency in the world, their sense of empathy in the world, or their sense of leadership in the world. And, you know, if you just want to push out 20 years, maybe 30 years, depending on how, how old your child is, and think about how would you ideally want them to be talking to your grandchildren if they have kids? Do you want them to be the person who is snapping at their kids and getting them to come over on a dime? Or do you want them to be the person who is breathing, bending down, getting on their level? Or for those of you who have older kids, the person who's being calm and collected and really connecting with their child and really working through something with their child, even if it's not pretty on the outside, right? I liken this to, like, what do you want? Because those are the tapes that we are, that's the legacy we're creating in how we talk to our kids. And I am just seeing that play out here with my daughter, as I told you, and, and this little boy, it's just, it's awesome. It's so like glitter everywhere, you know? Um, so it's kind of like, you know, when you take out a, a frozen chicken or maybe it's not even frozen, but the chicken and you can like sear it on the outside, but it's raw on the inside. Like I think about behavioral style parenting, um, being like the, the, the chicken that is like cooked, it looks cooked on the outside, right? Things look good on the outside, but then you like cut into it and it's like raw and unfinished and a mess and you can't eat it. Like you can't really, there's no depth supporting it, right? As opposed to um, a slower, more empathic way of parenting is really a full cook. It's like all the way through and it doesn't always look, you know, it should look cooked on the outside, I suppose. You know, I don't want to be raw on the outside. It's not the reverse of, of the frozen chicken or the uncooked chicken, but it's certainly um, this notion that it's cooked all the way through. It doesn't just look good on the outside. It's something that you can really dig into. Um, I'm not, I don't usually make food analogies. That one just kind of popped to mind. Um, so um, that's what I have for you today as far as hanging in here, doing the work, showing up, and staying on this path, establishing your North Star, and you know, this is about staying on a path. It's not about perfection and walking lockstep in a way. It's about taking a new approach and figuring out ways to make it work as your child grows over time. That's really what it's about. And there's not going to be one magical tactic or one magical phrase, right? This is a strategy that we're building. And the strategy is not going to change. It won't. The tactics will change. The tactics will change over time. They'll change with your child. They'll change with the situation. They'll change with their age. They'll change with you and what you're comfortable and not comfortable doing. So we want to load you up with lots and lots of tactics and more importantly, root you in this strategy whereby once you get really comfortable with the strategy and all the information that supports this strategy, then you're more and more tactics are going to come to you naturally and you'll be able to implement the tactics that I share with you uh, more easily and more fluidly. It's like learning a new language. 